Number 46. H2 is produced by the reaction of 118.5 milliliters of a 0.8775 molarity solution of H3PO4, so phosphoric acid, according to the following equation. And then we have 2Cr plus 2H3PO4 yields 3H2 plus 2CrPO4. And then letter A, it says outline the steps necessary to determine the number of moles and mass of H2. Okay. So, you know me, right? You know me by now if you guys have been with me. I like to write everything big. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this equation bigger so that I could work with it easier. So in this case, we have 2Cr, whoa, 2Cr plus 2H3PO4, and that yields 3H2 plus 2 CRPO4. Now the good thing is, is that they gave us an equation, thank goodness, but they also balanced it. I know this because I already see coefficients in the front. Usually when you see coefficients in the front, it's already a balanced equation. So we bypassed that step. Beautiful. The second thing that I like to do is I like to list out what they gave me underneath the compound that, you know, the information is for. So in this case, I've just read it again. It says, hi, uh, hi, <laughs> H2 is produced by the reaction of 118.5 mils of a 0.8775 molarity solution of this. So they gave me information for H3PO4. So I'm just going to write that down. So I'm going to say that, remember, when we did the molarity questions, right, when you have a volume of a molarity solution, they go together. So both the volume and the molarity both go with H3PO4. So I have 118.5 mils, and then I have 0 0.8775 molarity. Cool. So they gave me two pieces of information for this. And then we need to find the number of moles and the mass of H2. So that's this one. So I'm just going to write myself a note. I'm just going to say, okay, I need to find the moles and I need to find the mass, AKA the grams. Cool. Now, when we see this, they gave us a balanced equation. We have information on one compound and we're looking for information of another compound through a balanced equation. This is stoichiometry. Now the general flow of the stoichiometry problems is shown as this, which I'm, which I'm just going to bring down a little bit here. Now I know it as I drilled it into my head of grams to moles to moles to grams, grams to moles to moles to grams. I color coded it for you guys just so that, uh, it's easier to see the red is for everything that was given to you. This is usually the starting material, AKA for the numbers and the compound that you have the numbers for. What you're looking for is the blues. Now, the great thing about this schematic little thing here is that you could pop in and pop out at any time. You don't have to flow through the whole thing. Maybe you need to start at moles and then flow. So you can manipulate this little, you know, schematic thing to your needs. Now let's look at our, uh, situation here. Well, it seems that they gave me a volume and they gave me a molarity. Hmm. How, how am I going to get that to either grams or moles? of the starting material, because it's got to be in the red. Oh, we've done molarity before. We know that formula. Molarity equals moles divided by liters. I have the molarity and I have the liters, so I can find the moles. Now, if I'm just rearranging this formula, right, I know that moles equal molarity times liter. I have the molarity, but what's the problem here? Oh, they gave me mils. Shoot. So the first thing I have to do is I have to convert the 
0.5 mils into liters. Okay, how do we do that? That one's easy peasy, right? From mils to liters, all we have to do is just divide by 1,000. Similarly, you could take the decimal and move it three spots over to the left and then fill in the placeholders if you need to. So this would be the same as saying, uh, maybe I'll do it in black, 0 0.1185 liters. Now I have the right units to plug in to get my moles. So let's give it a go. Mole equals, um, let's see, the molarity was 0 0.8775, and then the liters was 0 0.1185. Okay, cool. So the mole, and this is of H3PO4, equals, let's multiply those two together, 0 0.8775 times 0.1185, four sig figs all around, so 0 0.1040. Just want to make sure. 1040, yep, okay. Now, we now are starting where? Oh, we bypass this step. We already have the moles of this which is beautiful because I can just say bye-bye. Bye-bye to this step. I don't need it. That's what I mean by you can cater it to the specific problems that you have. Okay, now we're ready to rock and roll. I have 0 0.1040, right? Moles of, and maybe I'll move this out a little bit, H3PO4. And from there, I want to find out the moles and the mass of H2. So I'm just going to erase these Bs and just say specifically H2 and H2. Okay. Now, if you want to label this as letter A, that's fine with me because this is basically the steps necessary. And just put a note here, you know, the first thing we had to do is we had to do mole equal molarity times liter. So that was the first thing. So find the moles of H3PO4, and then here's my little schematic drawing. So now for B, let's just find the calculations. This is all conversions. So we're just gonna do it as, you know, converting and using ratios. Always start with what you're given, and I will color code this so I'll keep with the reds and the blues. So I have 0 0.1040 mole of H3PO4. And now, just like any conversion factor or what I'm converting, I always multiply by some ratio, right? Always put the units first, and then you go back and fill in the numbers. So I don't want mole of H3PO4, so that goes on the bottom. And I look to see who I want. Oh, I want moles of H2. So the units are in place. Now I just have to figure out what are the numbers that go on the top and the bottom. Well, this is a new thing, right? If I have a mole conversion, mole on the top and the bottom, and if it's of two different compounds or molecules, the only relationship that they have is through the balanced equation. So I have to go to the balanced equation to get these values. And when I mean go to the balanced equation, I mean all we're doing is we're just looking at the coefficients that are in the front of the molecule. That's how they're related. I specifically only care about H2 and H3PO4. So I only care about this one, and I only care about this one. For every two H3PO4s, I will produce three H2s. So there's a 2 in front of H3O, H3PO4. I'm going to put a 2 here. There's a 3 in H2. I'm going to put a 3 here. And that step's done. Now cancel out your units. So this unit cancels out with this one. 
And since they wanted to know the moles of H2, right, and that's what I have here, I'm going to stop and I'm going to find out the answer. Now anything in the denominator, I will divide. Anything in the numerator, I will multiply. So I'm going to say 0 0.104 times 3 divided by 2. And I need four sig figs uh, because the smallest number of sig figs that we have in the, in the beginning, because we did multiplication, should be this, the sig figs at the end. And they both have four sig figs, so I need four at the end. So 0 0.156 moles of H2. Okay, almost there. We found out one answer. I'm going to, you know, produce 0.156 moles of H2. But now I'm here and they still want me to find the grams. So I'm just going to pick off where I left off. I'm going to say that I have 0 0.156 and maybe I'll make that in blue moles of H2 converting. So multiply by some ratio. I don't want this unit, so that goes on the bottom. I look and see what's next. I have grams of H2. That goes on the top. Units are there, but now what are the numbers? This is a mole and gram conversion of the same compound. We did that already, like I think a couple of chapters ago, right? Whenever we want to convert from a mole of one thing to grams of the same thing, we use the periodic table. So get out your periodic tables. And remember, when you're using the periodic table, you will always have one mole. So the one goes with the mole. And the mass on the periodic table is the mass number. But it's H2. So I'm going to take two hydrogens into account. So on my periodic table, two hydrogens roughly are 2.016. You can round to two. It's whatever. Units cancel. I have the unit that I want, which is grams of H2. And now I'm just going to multiply by 0.156. And I just saw that I said I needed four sig figs. So what do I have to include at the end here? Ah, I got to include a zero. Will that really make any difference to the answer here? No, but I just want to make sure I cross my, what is it? Cross my I's, dot my T's, what, whatever, <laughs> right? Zero point. Three, one, four, five. And that's grams of H2. So the mole unit of H2 and the gram unit are exactly the same. They, they, they mean the same, but they're just in two different units. And this just means that if you've started off with this amount of volume, with this amount of molarity, you will produce you'll produce 0.3145 grams of H2 or 0.1560 moles of H2. And that's that. So guys, hope for this helped. Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if it did help you. It just gets back to me when I check the analytics, you know, that I'm doing my job right. So I can keep going, you know, in, in, this, in this respect. All right? So I hope you guys all are having a great day. I hope, I hope everyone is studying hard. And good luck on your quizzes or tests. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.